Um, I'll now uh, introduce our first witness, which is uh, Nina Olson. Uh, she is the National Taxpayer Advocate, which is an appointment she has had since 2001. Um, she leads the Internal Revenue Services Taxpayer Advocate Service. Um, the office is dedicated to assisting taxpayers with their uh, IRS problems. And uh, again, thank you for coming and uh, the Honorable Olson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Valesquez, and distinguished members of the committee. Thank you for inviting me to testify today about the impact of tax complexity on small businesses. My office estimates that small businesses alone spend at least 2.5 billion hours each year complying with income tax filing requirements. This is not a trifling matter because small businesses are the creators of most new jobs and the employers of about half the private sector workforce. To state the obvious, the more time and resources a small business spends on tax compliance, the less time it has to grow and hire employees. In my 2010 annual report to Congress, I identified the need for tax reform as the number one most serious problem facing taxpayers and the IRS. The tax code is filled with special breaks, helping taxpayers who can afford tax advice and discriminating against those who cannot. This complexity confuses taxpayers and creates a sense of distance between taxpayers and the government, which undermines taxpayer morale and leads to lower levels of voluntary compliance. The complexity of the tax code is also burdensome for the IRS, making it more difficult for the agency to meet taxpayer needs and probably resulting in more audit and enforcement actions than a simpler code would require. My report advocates for comprehensive tax reform, which I believe is ultimately a necessity, but there are smaller steps we can take right now to ease the compliance burden of small businesses. I will briefly highlight several tax requirements that impose unnecessary compliance burdens on small business and requires simplification or, at the very least, more guidance. First, the home office business deduction is unnecessarily complex and requires time-consuming record keeping by many small businesses. We recommend the creation of an optional standard home office business deduction. Second, the S-Corporation election process is confusing and causes many taxpayers to make inadvertent errors. As a result, some businesses inadvertently become classified as C-Corporations, and their shareholders cannot deduct operating losses on their individual tax returns. To address these problems, we recommend simplifying the election process to allow small business corporations to make an S-election by checking a box on a timely filed Form 1120-S. Third, business owners need greater flexibility under the trust fund recovery penalty, which can apply against a person responsible for filing or paying over a business's employment taxes. Currently, the strict application of the penalty's willfulness component requires the responsible person to use all available funds to pay the delinquent tax and prohibits the use of any funds to pay operating expenses of the business, even to keep the business going. We recommend the IRS not assess this penalty where there was an intervening bad act, such as embezzlement, um, and the pa taxpayer makes payroll payment arrangements and remains current with payment and filing obligations. Fourth, the IRS has long acknowledged that taxpayer service and enforcement both play important roles in maximizing tax compliance, but the IRS's compliance initiatives these days are rooted exclusively or primarily in enforcement measures. Particularly when it comes to small business taxpayers, I believe outreach initiatives that educate taxpayers about the bewildering array of income and employment tax requirements they face are critical. Several years ago, the IRS conducted an extensive series of surveys and research studies to better understand the service needs and preferences of individual taxpayers. We have recommended the IRS replicate this process to better understand the service needs and preferences of small business taxpayers as well. Finally, I want to close with a word about IRS collection policies and procedures. The IRS does not do enough to work proactively with small business taxpayers that have emerging collection problems, particularly those who fall behind on their employment tax obligations. The IRS should provide early assistance, including calling the taxpayer and discussing and utilizing flexible collection tools such as installment agreements, partial payment installment agreements, and offers in compromise. Further, the IRS should develop a better understanding of the reasons for noncompliance among small business taxpayers 
taxpayers, so it can apply appropriate collection techniques. Toward that goal, it should develop a definition of economic hardship for small businesses that balances tax collection and promotion of a level playing field on the one hand with the government's and taxpayers' interest in helping small businesses remain viable and contributing to the country's economic growth on the other. I appreciate your interest in these issues and would be happy to respond to collections. Questions. Thank you. <laughs> <Collect> collections, too. <laughs> that too. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Olson.